warmly welcome on SRR TV Lab. So today I would like us to see what is pulse pressure and what mean arterial pressure is and how to calculate them and what they indicate. Good. Let's start with pulse pressure. Pulse pressure represent the force that the heart generates each time it contracts. That is what we call pulse pressure. It is the force that the heart generates each time it contracts. And that pulse pressure is the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Do you get me? Pulse pressure is the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Let's take an example. Suppose someone has blood pressure which equals to 140 over 80 millimeter of mercury. Therefore, the pulse pressure will be 140 millimeter of mercury minus 80 millimeter of mercury, which equals to 60 millimeter of mercury. This is the pulse pressure. Now let's see the normal ranges of pulse pressure. Actually, the normal range is between 40 to 60 millimeter of mercury. Pulse pressure or PP is considered low when it is less than 40 millimeter of mercury. Then you wonder what does a low pulse pressure or a low PP indicates? A low pulse pressure can indicate decreased cardiac output and it is often observed in people with what we call heart failure. Do you get me? It is often observed in people with heart failure. Now let's see when is pulse pressure considered as high. Actually it is considered as high when it is more than 60 millimeter of mercury. And let's see what are the things that lead to high pulse pressure. So actually high pulse pressure can be due to high blood pressure or fat deposit that build up on your arteries. That is what we call atherosclerosis. So apart from high blood pressure and atherosclerosis, iron deficiency anemia and what we call hyperthyroidism can also lead to an increase in pulse pressure. And this high pulse pressure has some complications. So this high pulse pressure is often associated with increased risk of heart attack or stroke, stroke or cardiovascular accident. After seeing pulse pressure, now let's see what we call mean arterial pressure or MAP. Now here is the formula for mean arterial pressure. Mean arterial pressure equals to one third of pulse pressure plus diastolic pressure. Good. Let's take our example where blood pressure equals to 140 over 80 millimeter of mercury. This means mean arterial pressure equals to one third of 140 minus 80 plus 80 millimeter of mercury. Good. This will equal to one third of 60 plus 80 finally equals to 100 millimeter of mercury. This is the mean arterial pressure of our patient. So mean arterial pressure actually is an average blood pressure in an individual. You get me? In an individual during a single 
cardiac cycle. That is the mean arterial pressure. Now let's see what is the needed mean arterial pressure. Actually, map or mean arterial pressure of at least 60 millimeter of mercury or greater than that is needed. Needed for what? It is needed to ensure enough blood flow to vital organs. Such vital organs are like the heart, brain, and kidneys. Low mean arterial pressure, remember, it is the one which is lesser than 60 mm of mercury, is an indicator of some conditions. Let's see such conditions, such as, let's see, first it's sepsis, which is an infection in blood, second is stroke, third is the internal bleeding, when you get an injury and then you undergo the internal bleeding, this will lead to low mean arterial pressure. So we say that mean arterial pressure is higher when it is more than 100 millimeter of mercury. Then this high mean arterial pressure lead to blood clots or damage to the heart muscles. And this will make the heart to work a lot harder. So guys, Thank you for watching the video. I hope it's very helpful. So please don't keep this information just with yourself. Share this information to your colleagues. And see you in another video next time. May God bless you about that. Please support this channel by pressing like, subscribe, and the bell. This is a huge support for this channel. May God bless you.